Right now, we are on the verge of an incredible turning point in the crypto history books, where we're looking at a project that has kind of redefined our understanding of how value is created. We're seeing a bubble-like mania for a project called YFI. You're in finance. Now, of course, you DeFi heads, you smart kids have been following this for quite some time, and so have I. But the last week has made it clear that this mania phase is maybe just beginning. With copycats even experiencing parabolic growth, it's up to us to now answer the question, is this an overpriced trend? Or is this true value being created and now finally being reflected from a fair launch token? We're going to get to all of this and more as we dig into YFI mania. And then we cover some very, very interesting altcoin news, talk about some serious gems. So if you guys are excited for this episode, if you think it's going to bring you some value, do me a favor and absolutely destroy that like button. Laggy, boo. It was on my phone. House, YFT. All right, all right, all right. Seems like you guys are hearing and seeing me okay. I'm gonna get to some Q&A at the end of the video. So if you guys have some burning questions, do me a favor and try to hold them till I get through my presentation. It's a little bit harder for me uh, to get through uh, all the information when I'm dealing with uh, too many questions. Let me turn down my mic a little bit. All righty. Yep, Ample's on the list of things to discuss today. So let's hop into the, uh, let's hop into the view here. Fix up my webcam and we're golden. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is what is this YFI thing? Because over the last few days, let's just look at the chart here. We have a 20% growth in this. This is now over $30,000 per token. Uh, and if we look at the market cap here, it's been absolutely parabolic, the growth here on YFI. And some are calling this the new gold of crypto, which is, of course, a tender topic here for us Bitcoiners. But we need to be talking about where the value has been created here. And if this ridiculous run up, and of course, the copycats, if this is based upon real value, if this is just a bubble, is this just a trend? Let's talk about it. So let's start at the beginning. What is this YFI thing? So YFI stands for Yearn Finance. It was created by Andre Cronje, and it was launched in a totally fair way. And when he launched it, uh, essentially Andre said he built this product for himself to essentially automate his yields, his yield farming. And what Yearn.Finance essentially allows you to do is to automatically move around your funds uh, to either stake and earn, uh, to lend, uh, and essentially Bar, uh, essentially maximize the amount of yields you can get off your coins, off your cryptocurrencies. And so obviously at the time he wrote this, the assets under management were about $8 million. As we'll talk about in just a few minutes, uh, the current assets under management are closer to a billion dollars here. We just call it a billion for easy round numbers sake. Um, and so these are very, very compelling metrics. I'm a big fan of looking at Total value locked, because TVL, total value locked, is one way to measure utility here in the DeFi space. So at the time of writing this, just about a month and a half ago, we had the total value of the assets under management about $8 million. And essentially, they were earning uh, APY for liquidity pro providers. They also have products such as Y-Trade Finance, uh, which at this time was uh, yet to be publicly uh, launched. But essentially, it allows you to trade at leveraged, capped at 1,000 uh, X and 250 X for those who uh, didn't do the fee prepaid. They also had Y Liquidate, which was an automatic liquidation engine for Aave. They have Y Leverage Finance, which creates 5X leveraged die vaults uh, with USDC, over 9 million in short positions created with an average of 16% profits. Y Pool Finance, Y Swap Exchange, uh, Asterisk.Finance. As you can see, there's a lot of financial products coming out here, DeFi products being created and launched in rapid succession by Andre Cronje, the genius behind YFI. Now, he's also known for saying that it has zero financial value, zero. Now, of course, the astute observer would realize that this is his way of getting around the idea that he's launching a security, which, of course, he's making it clear he's not, right? He's just launching a DeFi decentralized asset, and the world is giving it value. The market is giving it value. He says, earning YFI is simple. Provide liquidity to one of the platforms above. Stake the output tokens in the distribution contracts. We will provide an interface for this, and you will earn a governance-controlled amount per day. So essentially... 
the YFI is completely community driven now and 100% of the supply has been controlled now by the community. And so this is an incredibly powerful concept that he did where it's a completely fair launch. And he essentially just created a really smart product that everybody wanted. Uh, he reiterates a lot of times that these have not been audited. They're essentially, they're essentially experiments that he's created for himself. And uh, in the end, what he's done here is he's empowered a bunch of people uh, with products that he sees as tremendously viable. And so what we're going to be talking about is, is this overpriced or underpriced? And we've seen absolutely ridiculous mania phase with YFI and all of its clones, YFV, YFII, and now the list goes on, right? Because all of these have been catching ridiculous gains. So Masari just a few days ago, and of course, because this is five days old, now this chart is completely out of date. Uh, as you know, DeFi moves at literally warp speed. But what we're looking at here is essentially DeFi price to sales multiples. Now, what price to sales multiples is doing here is it's essentially approximating something called like PE earnings. And I'm going to make my head really small here, just so you can see something like a ZRX has like a 1775x, whereas YFI has a 20x on this. And so as we go in, let me just quickly define for you um, what a PE ratio is. The price to earnings ratio or PE ratio is the ratio for valuing a company that measures its current share price relative to its per, earn, per share earnings EPS. <clears throat> the price to earnings ratio is also sometimes known as the price multiple or the earnings multiple. So this is a concept used if you ever on CNBC or looking at any kind of traditional market investing channel, they'll be talking about PE ratios. And typically they've been in the sort of 15 to 30 range. Now they've drifted much higher, uh, but something like a 40 is a very high PE ratio. Uh, but that's sort of where the traditional stock markets measure their essential values, right? PE ratios is a way to say like, is this stock uh, really valued at this based on what the actual company has earned. And so looking at essentially what uh, the total value locked here, the total value locked here as a billion dollars, right? This is a tremendous amount of value locked in urine finance, right? We're looking at the TVL in urine finance being a billion, 967 million, right? So that's absolutely astronomical. And as we're looking at their total market cap, their market cap here is almost is about a billion dollars, right? So it's just a question here of, is this overvalued? When the actual amount of value being locked in here, the actual amount of uh, value being created here or being put into this ecosystem is about on par with the actual value here of the token as measured by market cap. And as we look into these tweets, um, here's another one, uh, which is, I'll make a little smaller, but you can see here, uh, let me see if I can make this a little bigger without, yep. So you can see here that YFI uh, just yesterday was being measured at a 14x PE comparison where you have something like a Kyber over 600 uh, X PE, right? So you're looking at these ratios. If YFI was to achieve the same PE ratio that something like a Ren or something like a Synthetix was to achieve or even something like a Bancor, you're looking at this thing doing 400%, doing hundreds of X's from here, which is almost mind boggling because the thing, depending on how you measure it, has already gone a thousand X. And I think that's just a real testament to the amount of true activity, true value being locked in the YFI ecosystem. This is legitimate, right? What's happening here is not being measured by hype, not being measured by essential token multiples or social scores. This is real value being locked in the ecosystem. And for that reason, YFI is flexing. And it's not just flexing based upon hype, right? It's not just bubbling based upon hype. There is an almost one-to-one -one ratio between the market cap value and the actual TVL being locked in here. There's almost a one-to-one -one ratio. The market cap is slightly above the TVL, right? Which to me is absolutely astounding. And these are the types of comparisons you need to be doing when you want to understand if valuations are justified. Now, of course, you can make the argument that the valuations in DeFi are overstated because a lot of these tokens have had explosive market cap growth and then they're being locked into other ecosystems. And then so you're having this sort of... Uh, a variety of exponential overvaluations of tokens that are being locked and value being measured. So you could argue, right, that the TVL is not a good metric. And I'm certainly up for hearing about those arguments. But given the fact that it is a metric and it's not a terrible metric, it's a real metric because all of that value in theory, you could cash it out for real things like cash or houses. I see it as a, as a decent metric, right? 
So looking at this TVL metric and looking at the market cap, there is an argument that this thing is wildly, wildly undervalued. And that's something that I think I want you to take, you, take a second and let that sink in. That's something that has started with a market cap of $1 million back on July 18th. Obviously, very few people were involved in the project. It rapidly gained significant, you know, 10, 20 million market cap from there. But if it started here at a million dollars and it's now at a billion dollars, that's a 1,000x and that's a 100,000% gains. This is not a clickbait. This is not a drill. This is real. And so you must be thinking, oh, anything that's done this has been a total bubble, has been a total fraud. It's been just an illusion. But I don't think that's the case here with uh, urine finance. I think there's a lot of real activity. And let's go ahead and try to explain a little bit more about why this is going on because Andre Cronje has been pumping out the updates, pumping them out. Here, let me see here. They have Y uh, Insure.finance coming up. <laughs> he says, do not use yet. I love that. But it's insurance for balance or compound, curve finance, synthetics, and of course, yearn. They are doing no KYC, policies tokenized in NFTs, and it's underwritten by uh, Nexus Mutual NXM, and so, which is an you know, insurance provider here. And so you can see here, they keep, comp they keep pumping out the products. They keep pumping them out. And that's leading to a real exponential multiplier on the energy and the excitement around the token YFI, which started with zero value and yet is sitting here at over $30,000 in value. Now, for those of you who uh, you know, might have feel like you've been left behind on this trend, well, I just want you guys to put yourself in my shoes, who I actually bought to YFI back when it was about $2,000 a pop. And uh, my transaction failed on Uniswap. And I actually, you know, stupidly didn't uh, redo it. But of course, now I'm kicking myself. I don't actually have any YFI. Um, and usually, I, as you guys know on this channel, I try to stay away from things that are too crazy, too parabolic, because, you know, I've just had bad experience. But the more I dig into this, the more I think that there's a real argument that this thing is actually undervalued and that this thing has a long way to go, a long way to go, especially if this guy, Andre Cronje, keeps delivering the goods on the product updates and keeps expanding the use cases and the diversity of the utilities that it serves. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, but I am an extreme extremely uh, impressed viewer of this project. And uh, yeah, I, I have no shame in saying I missed my entry. Um, but even so, even 32K, it sounds ridiculous, but that might even be a cheap price for this if you're evaluating the actual utility. And so as we see things like YFII, right, which were started and it seemed like a scammy fork, those are even gaining a tremendous amount of utility. And we're seeing that, okay, people who feel like they might have missed the boat on YFI are now hopping in like crazy to this DFI money or YFII. And you saw here, you know, uh, another uh, YouTuber box mining, sorry again for the sirens in the background. Uh, another uh, YouTuber box mining actually is part of this project. And so congratulations to Michael uh, for being a part of this. It seems like this is the kind of, uh, I guess, I hate to say it to this, but this is kind of the Pepsi, I guess. Uh, I don't think it really is because essentially um, they won't have Andre Cronje cranking out the utilities. You know, YFI is pretty singular in the space. And that's why the clones, they might have pops like this, but I'm not as confident in the clones as I am in, you know, the original because they have Andre at the helm and his genius has really been the driver of the value. And so, you know, a lot of people are bringing up, you know, other types of clones here. I'm going to try to get to these super chats so I don't miss them. Um, and yeah, they're asking me about ZZZ. I think this is another clone of YFI. Um, but yeah, I haven't looked into it. I'm sorry. Um, and DX sale, sale is the next crazy DeFi. Thanks, guys, for the super chat. Really appreciate the, uh, the super chat, guys. Uh, super, super appreciated. And, uh, and I wish I could have better answers for you there. But um, yeah, so DFI money, absolute crazy growth. Uh, very, very cool that Michael is a part of it. And it shows you that, you know, the smart YouTubers are doing really interesting things in the industry. And so, you know, much respect. This is already a top 100 coin. Um, let's see if it can last and keep growing. But again, these are based upon the total value locked in the ecosystem. And of course, with a billion dollars locked in YFI, it makes sense why it has a billion dollar market cap. It's almost a one-to-one -one ratio there. Usually, coins have an astronomically higher ratio of the actual market caps to what the actual you know, financial activity going on within their network is. So that's my take on YFI, is that it might seem very bubbly, but in reality, they're doing incredible things. And Andre, hats off to him. I would love to have him on the show, to have him explain a little bit more about his vision. I just tweeted uh, to him 
I was going to save this for a little bit later, but let me see. Yeah, I just tweeted to him, guys. Um, here, I asked him, uh, Andre Cronje, uh, hey, man, any chance you'd be willing to come on my channel for an interview? DM's wide open. And so if you guys want to go show this uh, some love, show this tweet some love, I would really appreciate it because I'd love to get him on and sort of pick his brain and understand uh, where he sees the future of this industry, where he sees is this a sustainable trend? Is this, uh, you know, where does YFI fit in the larger scheme of things? So I think it would be a great interview. And so if you guys, uh, if you guys think this is uh, an interesting thing and you'd like to see me interview Andre Cronje, do me a favor and go retweet this, like it, uh, show it some love so that Andre might notice it. And also, guys, I just, you know, I started my Twitter like two and a half years ago at Elio Trades. If you guys aren't following me on Twitter, I'd really appreciate it. Um, we're here at like 92, 5, uh, 90, 9,255 uh, followers, and I'd really like to hit 10K. So if you guys want to help me to uh, hit 10K, right now we have literally over 1,000, 1,134 viewers in here. So if you guys want to help me, you guys within this chat, could easily help me hit 10K if, if some of you guys went and hit the follow button. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys help me hit 10K. It's sort of a personal goal. And it just shows how fast this community is growing, how fast we're growing together. And it's been this amazing dividend that has been paying me back because a lot of you guys are thanking me for the knowledge. And it's my pleasure because the more I've educated this community, the more I've at least shown you the way I think about the world, the way I think about the crypto community or the altcoin ecosystem, by making this information easy and accessible to you guys, it makes me essentially in like you guys are coming back to me with amazing recommendations. And just so you guys know, if you guys aren't part of my uh, uh, Telegram community, t.me slash Elio Trades Crypto, uh, we have an amazing group in there. And a lot of my altcoin gems, if not all of them, they've been talked about in that group before they make it uh, to my YouTube as a gem. And so it's been an amazing feedback loop that makes the content better and then the content hopefully makes the community better. And so we're growing together. This is an amazing interplay we've created. And I genuinely believe that we've created the most capable and the most intelligent group of Telegram users out there. And so if you guys wanna join the revolution here, join t.me slash Elio Trades Crypto. I believe that that is an incredible, incredible opportunity. And we're doing awesome things. So thank you guys for, for being a part of it. I really believe that we're creating something truly special there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, excited to see where it goes. So do me a favor, please follow me on Twitter. And uh, if you guys want to be part of this sort of ground level, base level discussion about altcoins, I highly suggest you join my Telegram. We also have, of course, uh, BZRX, okay, so we'll talk about BZRX first. This just got the Binance treatment, and I covered BZX uh, back in July. I'm not sure what the exact price was, but it was you know somewhere around here in the 20 cent range, I think. And this thing is just beasting its way up. Now $1.38, absolutely fantastic there. So again, just wanting to check back in and show you guys, I don't just cover a coin and drop it. You know, I really cover things that I think have legs and have a long-term value, at least in the bull run, right? When things aren't bullish, nothing's bullish, right? But when we're in a good cycle, as I explained, the opportunities are tremendous and covering good technologies with good teams and real products that's how we're going to get ahead. That's how we're going to get ahead together. And so, you know, it's been an amazing feedback loop. And again, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, again, Ampleforth, which I know you guys have seen the saga that has been Ampleforth because I really was hyped on it at first. And then, uh, and then I got, you know, really disheartened when it had its death spiral. But, you know, I told everyone essentially here that I was going to uh, buy in heavy right down here at 65 cents or so and then sell off when it hit above a dollar to lighten my stack because I wasn't sure about the death spiral. But seeing it pump up like this, uh, the, way it's, the way it looks like it's going to go is once these positive rebases start again, you're going to see the FOMO around Ampleforth again. And so, you know, look at this. As soon as it really broke above a dollar strongly back in, it uh, looks like this was the end of June, it had months above a dollar, right? And that was because of those rebases. And so, you know, when it goes under a dollar, though, you don't want to be a part of this because it's going to death spiral, right? And so it's just a matter of how you view it. You know, it's, it's, it's meant to go back to a dollar, but when it's above a dollar is kind of when everybody wants it. And when it's above, when it's above a dollar, it's going to be giving people gains and positive rebases. So is this going to last? I don't know. 
Um, but in general, I know it sounds stupid, but that's sort of my approach is when it's above a dollar, it's a better buy than when it's under a dollar because it could death, who knows how long the death spiral could last. But congrats to everyone who's been in Ample. Uh, it seems like it's riding again. Uh, I'm not buying back in again. Um, I still hold some Ample. I sold most of it off, uh, you know, after the crazy, uh, <laughs> absolute crazy spiral we went on. Um, but I'm, you know, congrats to everyone who's still in Apple. You guys deserve the pump. It's been a, it's been a gnarly few weeks. And let's revisit Dia, Dia, whatever. Uh, Dia now making an amazing growth here, up now to 421. Again, we covered this at a dollar. This was one of my altcoin gems. And again, it shows you uh, that they're growing. And like I said, still a fan, still holding a lot. I was a little bit annoyed that they had their big market cap change with all of their coins getting released. Uh, which happened here, as you can see. Uh, and it just changed the growth pattern, right? Like I said right here, I said, wow, this is still going to grow, uh, but it's just going to grow slower. And so I wanted to make room for newer gems. And as we can see, those newer gems like Falcon Swap, right? Falcon Swap earlier today was up to, what was it up to? 46, right? That's a 300% growth from where we covered it just a couple days ago. So it's not about the fact that Dia is uh, no good. I'm still holding. Like I said, my, pro my price target for Dia is $10. However, it's just about uh, understanding that once things hit that, you know, $100 million market cap, they grow much slower, right? It's more like, uh, it's just slower growth, right? You're not going to get those 3x in a day, right? It's just much, much slower. But regardless, D is still a high quality project and just showing you that these gems, they keep on moving, right? Keep on moving. Um, and Unitrade, right? Unitrade, as we're starting to approach this supposed launch of their product, uh, same with Falcon Swap, right? Falcon Swap and Unitrade, they're both supposed to drop their products in September. We will see if they actually drop those products in September. That's the big question mark. And if they do, I think that they'll do incredibly well over the coming month. And so it's, you know, this market cap of $12 million is still a little baby for Falcon Swap if it ends up being the go to layer two for Unitrade or Uniswap. Uh, and Unitrade, I think, could absolutely have an explosive month, too, if they drop as fantastic a product as it looks like they'll be dropping. So again, just showing you the, the projects that we're covering, they're doing great growth, they're holding their gains, and it's because they have real use cases, real utility. And it's important that I wanted to keep uh, showing you guys that we're, we're not just covering these things and moving on, right? These are not just uh, single pumps. These are long-term projects. Uh, and then, so we also have this, I wanted to show this to you guys. Uh, we have a Polkadot ecosystem tab now, the dot ecosystem tab here on CoinGecko, which is only available on the desktop version. But if you go to one of these projects like Acropolis, uh, you can get to it because there's a tag here that says dot ecosystem. And so here on the tags, you can go to dot ecosystem and then it'll bring you into this one. Now I will say I tweeted at them. I'm a little bit annoyed. They don't have uh, PCX, uh, ChainX on this list. I don't understand why. ChainX is one of the sort of foundational projects on Polkadot. So I hope they add PCX, CoinGecko. Looking at you guys, looking at you. Uh, PCX again, uh, holding strong above $7. Again, we covered this thing at about $4. At one point it was up at like 10. Um, so again, these projects, they make big moves up. Then they hold a lot of those gains, uh, consolidate. And then they make another move. That's how the bull market works, right? That's how the bull market works. Um, another project that's not on here is Katen. Uh, Katen, which is the Darwinia commitment token, KTON. I don't know why they called it uh, Katen, but this is their rewards token, their staking rewards token. And uh, this thing, you know, uh, probably has a target of about 500 bucks by this end of year. I was not expecting it to make this big move. But again, another smaller cap uh, project here in the Polkadot ecosystem showing again the strength of that narrative. So as Polkadot comes closer to launch, um, I'm expecting a lot of these Polka projects to keep on chugging. As I said before, the narrative of Polkadot is so strong. Uh, we have a few really strong narratives. We have the yield farming, right, with YFI kind of being king there. We have uh, the DeFi narrative in general, right? We have the Polkadot ecosystem narrative. We have the Uniswap ecosystem narrative. They're all tied together by DeFi, but it's just very interesting to see how they all play together. It's very interesting. Um, we also have here, you know, DeFi reaching $9 billion in total value locked, continuing to rise, meteoric rise. And so this is not stopping. This DeFi train just keeps heating up, right? And it's starting to feel like 
we're really on the verge of hitting a new level of legitimacy where I'm starting to have some no coiners and newbies contact me and say, hey, El, how do I get involved in this? Uh, people who have not been involved in crypto, I'm seeing a lot more newbies. And that to me is exciting because the point of crypto is to expand these networks. If we're not expanding these networks, if the actual network itself is not growing, then the value of the network shouldn't grow. And that's what's been the the frustrating part throughout the bear market is very few new people were joining in during the bear market because price growth and wealth growth is really the best marketing for cryptocurrency, period, which is why Bitcoin is the best marketing piece for crypto, going from less than a dollar to $20,000, $20, right? That's incredible marketing. And so what we have to see here is the ability to keep going and keep growing, and that'll keep bringing in the newbies. The newbies bring new capital, and the network then grows, in my opinion, exponentially, or at least according um, to the law of network growth, right? We also have a, a, an article here saying that Chainlink has acquired a privacy-preserving oracle from Cornell. Essentially, any smart contract that was previously limited by data or private data will soon be able to function on a public blockchain like Ethereum without revealing any confidential information to the blockchain. This is already leading to the addition of various data sources that were previously much more difficult to place on chain due to fundament, uh, the fundamental nature of public blockchains being publicly viewable and the private nature of various sources of high value data. So if you don't understand what we're talking about here, there are a lot of data sources that are highly confidential valuable and private, financial data, medical data, insurance data, a lot of these pieces of data that, that are some of the most valuable pieces of data are not meant to be uh, seen publicly. So adding private data to the Oracle space is a tremendous step forward. And it's awesome just to see Chainlink just, wow, are they doing amazing work, Chainlink. And then uh, a nice little piece of news here, Cardano is trying to treat oracles essentially with the you know, good actor incentive uh, where they're going to be oracle, oracle agnostic here and they're getting it ahead of the Guggen era. Let's hope so because Guggen, we don't, I mean, hopefully it comes soon. But again, we've seen Guggen is three years late already. Not that Ethereum is doing any better, but I hope this comes sooner, right? Um, and essentially the new model int uh, introduces oracle pools which are capable of incentivizing good and, in, and disincentivizing bad behavior. The model also envisions data providers staking funds as collateral. If data providers feeds low quality data, then it can get quote slashed. And so this is unlike Chainlink, which introduced like a link as a gas token. And some were expecting an announcement to be made soon about Cardano integrating Chainlink's oracles. However, thus far, it hasn't materialized. Again, Cardano seems to be building their own islands out here. And so let's see how this works out for old Charles Hoskinson. Uh, but it's an interesting approach to the Oracle space. Again, maybe a little less uh, maybe a little less lucrative and investable as the Chainlink type products are banned. Um, but you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments section. It's always nice to see Cardano keeping pushing forward. I know there's a lot of Cardano's heads out there. I still hold a significant amount since back in the day. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to Cardano. I hope they can really add something dynamic and different here. But again, I'm on a wait and see with Cardano because uh, I'll believe it when I'll see it. And I have nothing against the project. I just have waited so long for them that I just want to see them deliver before I start getting more excited. Maybe just to protect myself, I've been hurt before. All right, and you guys, uh, we, we're growing at a ridiculous pace here on the LEO Trades Crypto channel. So I just wanted to say a big thank you guys before we get to the Q&A. You guys absolutely rock. Everyone like, uh, liking, commenting, subscribing. I really appreciate the subscribes and I appreciate you guys putting that notification bell on. That's what I'm trying to build here is a community where you guys get my information first. In fact, my researchers, the people who I actually have helping me do research, I don't even tell them which coins I pick because I don't want anyone to be able to know what I'm presenting as information before you guys do. I really am trying to do everything I can to make you guys the stars and make you guys essentially uh, having access to the information at the earliest stage. And so my goal with this channel is to sort of eliminate the paywalls, eliminate the VIP experiences that we've seen on other channels. And I, want, I really want everyone that, that notification bell, that is your ticket, right? In this channel, if you guys like the information I provide, 
then I highly encourage you guys to sub and put that noti bell on because those people are the ones hearing first. And as you guys know, I put a lot of time and effort and research into my picks. And so if you guys like the picks and you like how I how I think and how I research the noti bell, you will be the first people in the world to know what I'm presenting. And so if you guys are excited about that, if that inspires you to uh, want to subscribe to the channel, then I really appreciate it. And I can't express how grateful I am that we're building, I think, the smartest, biggest, uh, definitely the best and most interesting crypto community. I think we're building something completely unique here with the Elio Trades crypto channel. And again, Telegram is a nice way uh, to get involved. And we have a link here to the Telegram at the top of the screen. So you can see my Twitter and Telegram. They're linked on my channel page. And so again, you can see here, I've been tweeting some interesting stuff like how is PCX not on the dot ecosystem page at CoinGecko? Uh, if you guys like the type of content I share on Twitter, it's a very different type of content, but I think it's worth following. So I'd appreciate the follows. Let's see if we ended up making it close to 10K. All right, well, we got, we got like 50 followers on Twitter. I appreciate you guys. And yeah, I think that's it. So let's go and let's uh, hop into some questions now. Let's hop into some questions. All righty, I missed a super chat. Let's check it out. Hey, first time, Dano, what are your thoughts about Unipower to mill mark cap? So yeah, I think Unipower I covered, I covered it. I think it was just one of those more uh, pump driven coins. I wasn't a big fan, right? I wasn't a big fan of Unipower. I'm not a, not a holder, not an investor, not a promoter. Um, people looking for PRQ update. So uh, the reality for me about PRQ is I'm talking with the team and from what I can tell, they have a lot of very exciting things. What they've built is incredibly useful in the blockchain ecosystem. And I believe that they're going to um, start you know, releasing some amazing partnerships. So I'm very bullish on the next phase for PRQ, very bullish. And I have a huge, huge bag. So I'm really, really excited about what they have coming. And in the Oracle space, I think they're tremendously undervalued. Well, they're not technically uh, direct competitors to Band and Chainlink yet, but they'll move into that space later, I believe, especially with their recent uh, explosion. They're going to have the opportunity to provide tremendous value to different blockchains. And then I believe uh, over time, they'll be uh, an incredibly useful product for blockchain developers. As a developer, I can tell you what they've built is so, it saves developers months of pain and anguish and development time. And so I believe PRQ is a phenomenal, phenomenal project. And just so you guys know, you know, I, I am, I walk the walk. I don't just talk the talk. I believe, I when I present to you the gems, I believe in these projects long term and I'll be following up uh, in the near term with more information about PRQ. And I believe they have a lot coming. So they're just getting started. PRQ is just getting started. Uh, what do I think of UMA? It's been pumping and no one talks about it. So the thing about UMA is it's already huge, right? UMA is already like one of the top 50 coins. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's number 32 coin. So I believe they're doing in insurance. I believe decentralized insurance is what? Uh, economic guarantees. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're doing derivatives. Yeah, they're a very interesting project. Um, but as far as the actual amount of utility, as far as the actual amount of usage here, um, when we look at UMA... Um, I believe they are very, very low here. Uh, where's UMA? I don't even see it. Um, derivatives. Yeah, I don't see them listed here on DeFi Pulse. Um, but the last time I checked their, re their relationship between the actual amount of economic activity going on on their site and their actual valuation was a little bit out of whack for me. So I didn't get into it because I wanted something like a YFI, right? Where they're actually have a billion dollars locked in it and they have a billion dollar market cap. And so those are the types of ratios I can live with. Whereas UMA is extremely highly valued. Um, I don't know where my tab went. Um, let's get back to it. UMA. Oh, it's already number 30. Jumped from 32 to 30. Um, but yeah, they've been pumping. Like it's a good project and all, but I haven't been bullish on it because I want to see more utility and adoption. Uh, yeah, already an $870 million market cap, and they definitely don't have that much uh, economic activity going on. Um, let's see here. SYFI, Ample for YFI. You have to know about it. All right, I'll check it out. Um, SYFI. And again, uh, oh, it's not even on CoinGecko, so a little harder to research, but I'll look into it. Thanks, guys. Um, Ultra, ULS. So as you guys know, I'm extremely bullish on the gaming sector, extremely bullish. And Ultra has got a great partnership or a working relationship with Ubisoft. However, I'm very much so interested in game developers 
working on assets within a high fidelity game. I see that as the biggest missing link with the entire space is that gamers will do anything once they're in a game they like they'll do anything to get the gems they'll do anything to check check the boxes they'll do anything to get the skins if they like the game and they like spending their time there then they'll do whatever buy the crypto buy the nfts trade the thing stake it earn it whatever but the thing is nobody's focusing on the games and so that's my only criti uh, criticism is by focusing on a distribution platform as ultra is focusing it's just, to me, isn't the missing link, right? You can have a blockchain game that's distributed through the Epic Game Store, through Steam, or through Nintendo, uh, but what you need is really, you don't, we're not missing distribution. Distribution isn't the issue. We have iOS, Android, all these game stores, and those are some of the biggest companies in the world that are laser-focused on the future of their game stores, and so you're essentially taking on the biggest companies in the world uh, with, to me, uh, you're, there's no reason why someone needs to distribute a blockchain game through a blockchain chain if that makes sense right and so to me it's not solving the big issue but i'm you know i'm definitely bullish on blockchain gaming and i think uos ultra could do well but that's my breakdown is that they're not solving the key issue which is we need games zzz boom next i think zzz is another yfi clone if i'm remembering zzz um and we have i think so i think so Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. I need to look into this, guys. I don't like doing research live in front of people. I like a second to formulate my opinions. I'm very, very, very focused on delivering high-quality information and analysis to you. So sometimes doing all the research live is not really beneficial or, or conducive to that. Thank you for the $1 super tip. Ad can too. Ads can too. Thank you. We also got a 55 NOK donation. What do you think about DeFi Pi and Newton? Uh, so DeFi Pi was kind of like, I wasn't a huge fan of DeFi Pi when I first looked at it. It got a nice pump, I think, off of some coverage. But yeah, yeah, it got a huge pump, and now it's just... Yeah, so DeFi Pi, again, there's a lot of these DeFi uh, uh, projects that are just sprung up out of nowhere, and they have these sort of stock icons and these websites that really are just pretty easy to, you know, to spin up, right? And so... Um, I really, gosh, I clearly highlighted this, right? So I was on here, lending as a service, liquidity pools as a service, staking as a service. Interesting. It's interesting, right? Um, but I definitely don't know enough about it to recommend it. And I'm also kind of a little bit cautious about, uh, it looks like it's built upon other platforms. Don't know enough about it to recommend it. It's interesting, but I'm definitely not putting any money in it as of right now thank you again for the super chat guys will ewt moon so ewt is already like half a billion dollars i believe it'll moon but you got to wait for something like that to launch the long-term hold ewt very long term um hey bro new subscriber great thank you thank you thank you um yf link yfl yeah chain link plus yfi yeah interesting right Again, let's look at the actual value locked. Let's look at the actual value in the ecosystem. That's the key metric. You want to see which ecosystems are delivering the value, which ecosystems are actually attracting the users. And the thing about these YF clones are they don't have the magic ingredient, which I believe to be Andre Cronje. That's why I'm excited to talk with him. And even if he doesn't want to talk with me, I'll still be a fan, right? I think he's delivering incredible value. He's, he's shown himself to be a, a true creator here of value. And so without Andre, everyone's just going to be following. Everyone's just going to be imitating, right? So you're not going to be with the leader. You're not going to be with the actual, the, the golden goose. And so that's my one criticism is you can keep kind of imitating or you can be on the ship that has the true genius on it, right? So that's my, my one sort of criticism, right? My one criticism. Mike Edwards, just want to say thanks. Love your content and passion. Man, thank you so much. A $50 donation. Mike Edwards, thank you so much. That warms my heart. You just made my day. For real, I really appreciate that. Super generous of you. Uh, feel free to message me on Telegram. Ask me anything you want, man. I appreciate the donation. Hey, Elio, if Polkadot is interoperable and scalable with other chains, including ERC-20s, then wouldn't they just absorb the Ethereum ecosystem? So that's an interesting question, right? So that's that's definitely a question as to how this is going to all play out, right? To me, Polkadot makes Ethereum better, 
right? It, it makes everything better because it just allows for offloading of assets and processing. And especially once they bridge assets from Ethereum to Polkadot, you can imagine that those assets will move super, fa super fast, sorry, and that Polkadot will just make Ethereum better just the same way that Ethereum DeFi makes Bitcoin better. And you have a bridging of Bitcoin to Ethereum and now uh, Bitcoin's moving faster and being used in all these ways that are just simply actually not possible on the Bitcoin mainnet. And then you're looking at the same relationship, I think, with the Polkadot ecosystem, where I could see Polkadot not being a killer of Ethereum, but an enabler of Ethereum to reach higher heights and a higher potential. And so I'm very excited to see how that plays out. Again, Polkadot is still very much unproven, though it's very exciting. So it kind of feels like EOS 2.0, where there's just all the hype is around this, just fixing everything with Ethereum. That was what EOS was you know, sort of touted to do, and that's why it had billions of dollars. Uh, in its ICO, and now you're seeing essentially, you know, the value of uh, Polkadot in the in the multi billions, and that's to me it, it rings of EOS 2.0, and I think it's all possible, right? But even if Polkadot is everything you want it to be, I still think it just makes Ethereum assets even better, makes Ethereum even better. I believe. Um, I don't think it kills Ethereum. I think they work collaboratively. All right, what's my price prediction for FSW? So again, uh, like I said about a hundred times in that video, there is a lot of risk with FSW because the product has not been delivered. We do not know how many users are gonna use it. There's many question marks. But if FSW hits in September and people can essentially trade on Uniswap with a fraction of the fees and in faster times with less slippage, ooh, that's gonna get popular. That's gonna get popular. So there's a lot, there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of ifs there. But if that happens, gosh, I think it'll do great. I think it'll do great. I don't want to give you a price prediction, but I think it'll do great. All caps, great. Um, what did I see? What do I think of swap? I'm a big fan of swap, right? A, swap's a great example of I think a, a coin that just uh, just everybody recognized the value really fast, really fast. And then oh look at it. Oh wait, okay, okay, no, I need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so. Here's what you see with Swap. You see this parabolic run up of announcements and excitement and hype, and then they get their first IEO here or their Trust Swap launchpad, which I always said was going to be the critical driver of value. Again, no question that you see the big value exploding in anticipation of their first token launch, which again did an insane growth, Chain, uh, chain Games. Um, so very big congrats over to Jeff and that team. But then you see essentially the hype kind of fade off a little bit, and now you're seeing it start to go sideways and build up steam again. So if you missed, you know, when I did my trust swap video, I said, just wait or DCA and or, or wait for things to settle off and cool off. And now you see the emotion has cooled off, but the value, most of it is still there, right? This thing was down at half a penny when it started. Half a penny, right? The initial price down here is just, it says five cents, but it actually started on its initial sale at half a penny, right? So the growth here has been parabolic, astronomical, and seeing it catch some sort of support here. Like I said, when you have this much growth, it's great, but it's also bad because it means it's got to come down. There's not a lot of support here. So as it builds these bases of support here, you know, around these, uh, you know, around a dollar, a little less in the 80s and 80 cents, 90 cents. Hard to say right now, but this is when you really want to start. If you want, if you believe in the long-term value of TrustSwap, and I believe if they are to become this decentralized IEO launchpad or, uh, you know, the, cent the decentralized ILO launchpad, the potential for this is immense, immense, right? And so if people will, you know, people only want the trust swap launchpad coins because they've set up this environment that's way more favorable for investors, I think that's a, a very, very, very favorable position. But again, you have to understand this thing was already at a market cap of over, over 100 million a couple days ago. Now, 62 million, that's more palatable. Uh, so yeah, if you guys missed it, now I'd start DCAing, right? Dollar cost averaging, buying little bits over periods of time, starting to really fill those bags and waiting to see how this thing, you know, because from a from a position like this as it goes sideways then it can start making moves up again starting to try to go challenge that all-time high again and once it starts to really build strength again towards that all-time high then it can make another move up but it's got some work to do it, it again it did a 320x so if you think this thing isn't performing you're just you need to zoom out and realize how much growth it has done Take a look at Swapfolio. Yeah, so Swapfolio, interesting stuff. I don't know enough about it to recommend it. Uh, the team has reached out to me. Um, 
And, you know, I'm just a very strong due diligence doer before I end up recommending things to you guys. Wow, $100 donation. Your, hum your humility is, con uh, is great considering how strong your analysis is. Thanks, man. Passion matters. David O'Berry, holy smokes, $100. You absolutely rock, man. I appreciate it. I really, really love the ability to share. I mean, I've obviously been in this industry for several years and just sharing the things that I've learned. I don't, I don't think you need to go through all the pain that I've gone through, the pluses and minuses, the gains and losses to learn these lessons. Uh, it does help, all right? Uh, it definitely helps. Um, but if I can make you guys better, I've already seen the dividend being paid back to me because you guys now in the Telegram are bringing me these amazing projects. And I see the the contrarian viewpoints you're expressing, the doubts, running it through the funnel, making sure it checks the boxes. And I'd love the way you guys are thinking. So, you know, thank you guys. As much as you guys are thanking me, I really am appreciative of what you guys have done as well. Uh, I think we have an amazing, amazing future ahead of us. If this market holds, we, we're going to have an amazing, amazing uh, journey. And so I'm super excited for that. Thank you, David. Rebecca, thank you for the donation. Not even a comment. I appreciate you, Rebecca G. Shout out. Um, all right. Douglas, I love your video. I invested in DAI when it was 284, FSW 29, Trade 64, DMG, PCX. Yeah, sounds like you made some gains. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Uh, glad. Dope shirt. Thank you, guys. Walmart. Walmart. That's the secret. I get all my shirts at Walmart. That's the real low cap gem. It's the Walmart t-shirt section. I'll go over YFV in a bit. I need to establish their total assets locked. So I need to see where the assets locked are and establish the relationship between assets locked and token value. And then we can really, uh, really get to the bottom of it. Thoughts about Band and VeChain. Band, I'm super bullish on Band. Always bullish on Band. I think they're an amazing project, Band. My second try for a super chat. What is your opinion on Lid? Oh, yeah. So Lid, I pr sorry, Ron, if I missed your super chat earlier, I really am apologetic for that. Sometimes the chats roll so fast. I really, really sorry if I miss anyone's super chat. Feel free to t message me on Telegram if you ever miss a super chat, and I promise I'll get back to you. Lid has been kind of connected to too many negative things. I'm not a big fan, right? I'm not a big fan of Lid. Uh, it, there's too many scammy things around Lid. Um, so yeah, sorry. Uh, not to spread FUD, but I'm not a fan. Uh, LSB, thank you for the, the comment on the, the shirt. What about Orion? Orion's a great project. I kind of stayed away from it because it pumped way too hard at the beginning. Acro is an amazing project, and I think they're going to continue to explode with the growth of the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, question, Elliot, who is Satoshi? You are Satoshi. We're all Satoshi. That's the point, guys. We make up the value of this network. Bitcoin miners make up the value of the Bitcoin network. If, if we are holding these coins, then you're contributing. And so I think there's something really magical about us not knowing what Satoshi is. And I personally hope we never find out. Hope we never find out. But if you're asking who I, if I know who it is, of course I know who Satoshi is. Of course I know. Um, Digitex Futures. Yeah, you know, hasn't been performing. Uh, again, I'm a big believer in the derivative space, but who takes the, the cake there? Is anyone's guess, right? I believe decentralized derivatives, that industry is going to grow 100,000x in the future. But who is the winner? There's, I now see new decentralized derivatives platforms all the time. And so who's going to be the exact winner is harder for me to answer. Uh, Katen, big fan of Katen. I, you know, I had a $500 price target for that. Um, you know, actually, I want to throw some love uh, to someone I really like and I admire in the space. Uh, this guy, Lucky. Um, who his lucky L L L lucky L <laughs> L L L lucky L uh, L L capo de tutti i capi. Uh, go follow this guy. He's smart, smart guy. Amazing calls, amazing calls. I'm always trying to share the love and highlight other content creators. But uh, he was talking about Katen at a hundred dollars, right? Um, he was talking to Katen at a hundred dollars. So I, I definitely would say follow this guy, and and he's got some great picks. And of course, if you guys are not following me, we got 1,500 people in here. Guys, we're only 700 away from me hitting 10K followers on Twitter. And I know it's a silly and meaningless landmark, but you know, I only had 2K followers throughout two years of content creation. And, and it's just been wild. In the last month, we've gotten over 7,000 followers. So if you guys want to help me hit 10K, I'd really appreciate it. And of course, if you guys are not already subscribed, we're putting out the gems, working hard, working really hard to put out some serious gems for you guys. Uh, so I encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button. Uh, it's the best way for you to be in the know. 
All righty, guys. Uh, JGN, I haven't had a chance to research. Uh, haven't had a chance. Hack of Finance, the upcoming release, the black hole swap. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll look into it. I had some positive views of Hacka. It got covered by some other big influencers. So uh, before I give you my full breakdown, I need to do a little bit more research. Um, all right, guys. I actually have to go hang with a good friend of mine. I know, take some time not being in the crypto sphere. It feels crazy, right? But I just wanna say thank you guys so much uh, for following the channel, for supporting this journey that we've been on. I'm gonna work my butt off to give you guys the value back each and every day. Uh, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, please do that. And of course, if you wanna get in on the ground level chat, I encourage you guys to join my Discord, t.me slash eliotradescrypto. Uh, that's where we're really discussing all these gems first. So I encourage you guys to get in that chat and even that chat, you know, I don't think it's fair for me to tell them which coins I'm picking. So I typically don't discuss and actually confirm which coins are going to be my gems to anyone. That's the only way to know that is to subscribe and have that bell notification on. That is your ticket. You're, you're going to be the first one if you have that on. Uh, but I encourage you guys to follow the chat because you'll become, I think, smarter and better educated in the space by doing that. And again, I... I'm so excited for the next few months, the next few years of this journey. If this market holds, we're all going to be laughing our way to the moon, and I can't be more excited about it. My goal is just to provide you guys with the best information, and you guys have been an absolute joy uh, to build this community with. So thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. I hope you guys are having a great weekend wherever you are. Get ready for another week of amazing content and growth in this industry. As, as usual, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. My name is Elio Trades. I thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you very soon on the next episode.